Hey guys, Technivers here. Today we are discussing the newest version of Cruise of Slicer. We did a cruelty video the other day with their new version, so I figured that, uh, as usual, I would pop over to Cruise of Slicer and see what they have going on that's new. Um, this is just a very poorly sculpted model I made of myself. Uh, a little thin in the face. It's not too bad, uh, but it does give me a good little sculpture model to work with because we're going to play with some of the features here. Um, they have a, a custom support. So I wanted to check that out, and I thought that we would take a look at that now. First, I need to make sure that I have my stuff selected properly. It did bring over my settings. This is my Ender 3 uh, hooked into my OctoPrint, which isn't actually plugged in right now. Z height's right. G code's right. Uh, this is all stuff I went over in my first Bruce Slicer video because you do need to set this stuff up. Uh, so if you need to see how to actually plug in your printer to this software, check out that video. I'll put a card for it up here. Uh, so I know that's good. So we're going to go right to filament. I'm using a funky pink right now. So we're going to go with that. Extrusion multiplier is 1, density 1.03. That sounds about right. Uh, extruder temperature, we're going to go 217. Uh, other layers as well. And bed temperature, we're going to knock down to 60. We are doing PLA. We don't even really need it that high, but uh, save settings. Um, and then we got to go back to platter here. See, it turned it the color of the filament. Later on, we'll be playing with another uh, tool that, that lets you do color changes and it'll display it in different colors in here, too. So that, that's actually pretty cool. Um, there is another setting for variable layer height, um, and I think it's going to be in layers and parameters, uh, scene position, we're going to randomize. Um, they do have a base mode, their base mode's right here, that one was in the last one as well. If you're not seeing some of these settings, the green settings show up under simple, the yellow show up under advanced, and the red show up under expert. So all you got to do is click one of these tabs here to get your more advanced settings. So the first thing I wanted to try out was uh, the custom support. So we're going to do that in a couple ways. The first thing I'm going to do is I have uh, support turned on for everywhere here. And I'm going to slice this. We'll take a look at what it gives us. And then we'll see what we can do to make modification to that doesn't take long at all. As you can see, uh, it's got support pretty much all the way around the head, all the spots that are going to need support. Now, the interesting thing to note about this support is if you go to the support settings, there is a support skin, um, which actually creates a layer of shell in between the model shell and the support itself, uh, making it really, really clean when you peel the support away. Um, so that's really nice. We're going to go ahead and go back to 3D view here. And then if you click on the model, and go to, you can use either one of these. Um, say, let's do add support block or we're just gonna use a box. Uh, now if I drag that to where I want it, and we're gonna try and block all the support except for right on the nose and chin there. So, and in fact, you know what, we'll do, we'll actually, we'll block the support on half so you can see on this side what's actually going on. So uh, if I go to slice now, it does take a minute to recalculate it, but as you can see where I had that cube, it takes the support off. Uh, otherwise, it would look like this side here, so that is pretty cool. So if we go back uh, and we get rid of that, if there's somewhere you need to add support that doesn't actually have support, like say the back of the head here, you can go in and do add support enforcer. Um, they have different shapes. We're going to do box and hit slice now, and now it should create support all the way around the model here. As soon as it's done slicing. Yeah, and there you go. You can see that it added this extra block of support back here uh, where we wanted it. So really, really cool feature. Uh, a lot easier to deal with for custom supports than Kira is. So if you're looking for 
support heavy or uh, want to be able to adjust supports or you're printing something that has to have supports and you don't want to notice it on the model without too much post-processing finishing work, this is an amazing tool for doing that. And as you can see, as I pointed out earlier, if you go in here to printer settings, you can get um, your settings for your OctoPrint here. Um, you need to get the API from the OctoPrint website itself, and then you'll need the actual address that you're using your uh, uh, Raspberry Pi on. Uh, you can get that from inside the Raspberry Pi itself uh, by using the proper command, or uh, there's other ways to get that as well, but it's pretty easy to hook up and just run. I'm not going to mess with that too much right now. I do want to look at the auto updating profiles. Now if I go up here, I'm still under filament settings. If I go in here, um, there is a team of people that work for Prusa testing tons of different kinds of filaments and these are the settings they have dialed in for those particular filaments. Now I do have some Talman T glaze around here. I could try this out. Um, I do have a little poly maker. I don't have any Prusa filament or Prusa mint or color fab on me or anything from E3D so I can't really try those. Uh, but they do have their generic ABS, PETG, and PLA profiles. So I wanted to jump into their generic PETG profile. And it's looking like it's starting off a little lower and working higher. Uh, I feel like the bed temperature is a little bit high, but that it's not too bad. Um, basically, it's got most of the settings in here that we need if we go in. Uh, fan speed is maxing out at 50% so they're not using the full fan but they are using some of the fan um, and it's looking like they've got all the speeds in here and everything so um, there's an interesting little piece of code there so uh, yeah you know, going back, I'm not actually going to print this model because it uses a lot of plastic and I'm, uh, I just wanted to play with the supports and show you guys how easy it was to do custom supports. Uh, if you are a Kira fan, there's definitely uh, some advantages to trying out Prusa Slicer. There are some nice things about it that I think you will like. There are also some things about it that could be quite aggravating at first, like the fact that each of these settings has to be gone through and updated individually instead of having it all in one menu. Uh, but I do like the way that you can turn settings on and off easily with a toggle and see, okay, you got your basic settings and your advanced and your expert settings. So if you just want to do a quick print, you're not too worried about quality. You just hit simple and dial in a couple things, then you can print repeatedly with no problem. If you go into the expert settings and you dial those in, you're going to have some really, really nice prints. Uh, like I said, the first, uh, that skin between the model and the support, does make it a little bit harder to remove at first until you get used to it. Uh, you do eventually realize that you can get a tool down into the support and pry it away and it'll come apart uh, the skin intact so basically it comes off uh, more or less in one or two large pieces depending on how many hard angles are in there. So yeah, definitely recommend giving Prusa 2.1 a shot. Uh, I have been enjoying Kira 4.3 though, there haven't been any issues with it so far so uh, it's a matter of preference, but I do suggest that you at least try them both because some they have uh, there's advantages, there's pros and cons to each of them. So some of them are better at doing other things. Like I said, I like Prusa for the fact that you can customize your support, and I like that skin layer it puts on the support in between the model and the actual support structure because you get a far smoother model shell. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Stay tuned for more. We'll keep you updated as the new versions continue to roll out. And, uh, yeah, don't discount this uh, this version of Prusa Slicer. I mean, it's not uh, – it, it is based on Slicer, the openware or open source uh, freeware, but they've done so much to it, it's a completely different Slicer now. So definitely give it a check. Even if you didn't like the original Slicer, this is a whole new animal. And I think you'll enjoy it. And as always, guys, I am Technivorous. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. You can subscribe right here by clicking on the icon. And I put a couple videos up in the corner. One of them is going to be my latest video, my latest upload. And the other one is going to be what YouTube recommends for you. So 
feel free to check those out. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications down below, and we'll see you guys next time.